If your computer was lost or stolen or suffered some sort of critical hardware failure right now, how much data would you lose? A day? A week? A month? More than that? Those were the questions that were running through my head this morning when I had a power surge in my house, switched on my computer, and my hard drive wouldn't switch on. So today, let's talk about that boring but somewhat important topic called backup. I'm going to show you how to backup your computer. Hey, welcome to another Talking Tech with a Techie Guy. My name is Liron Segev, where I make technology simple. If you're into phones, gadgets, tips and tricks and how-tos, consider hitting that subscribe button and let's get on to today's show. There are several ways that you can back up your computer. You can create a folder on the iCloud, the Google Drive, OneDrive, Dropbox, all of them, and simply drag and drop files into that. So that's one way of backing up your computer. The problem is that you've got to remember to do that. And let's be honest, most of us are simply not going to. I don't want to just drag and drop my files in there. I want everything backed up. I want my system backed up, my apps backed up. I want my settings, everything. I want to be able to push a button. Everything simply restores exactly like it is right now. Longtime subscribers of this channel will remember the time I accidentally, whoops, deleted some video footage off my camera and I used a company called Issues Recovery Software to recover that data. Link will be up here. So the same company also has a home backup system. It's called the Issues To Do Backup Home System, allowing you to automatically, and that's the key word here, automatically backup your machine, including your settings and a whole bunch more. Let me show you what it's all about. Alrighty, so here is the entire interface, very straightforward, which I like. Top left hand side, press the three little lines and it reveals all the various backup options that you can perform. We're going to start with the file backup as that is the one that everybody wants. That's the one that's the most important need right now. Here you can select which files you want to backup. And of course you can expand any of these folders, tick or untick specific additional folders that you want in your data set. So I'm going to do that here. I'm going to add a whole bunch. Once I've done that, I go to the bottom where it says destination. Now, there's no point in backing up to my C drive. So what I'm going to do, click on browse and I'm going to look for something like the storage drive to my external drive, but you can back up to your network, your NAS device, your cloud, etc. Now here, give it a default name. Let's just choose one. Uh, daily backups. OK. Click on OK. And let's click on OK again. Now here, I'm going to say under your plan name, I'm going to give it a name as well so I can identify it easily. So daily file backup. And I'm going to go over to my description and I'm going to insert, I don't know, something that's going to make it very easy for me to know what this backup is all about. So backup of my files. I'm not that creative at the moment. Right, once we've done that, click on schedule. And this time, instead of choosing the one time backup, I'm going to select daily. And I know it's going to take a while, so let's kick it off at 3 in the morning. Why not? Now here's where I choose a full backup, incremental or differential backup. Oh. So what do they actually mean? So a full backup is exactly that. It's an entire full backup of all your systems, all your files that you've selected. An exact copy of them will be moved across to the backup medium. It takes the longest because obviously it's making an entire copy of absolutely everything that you've selected. And it requires the largest amount of disk space. An incremental backup essentially only backs up files that have changed since the last full backup or the last differential backup and requires the least amount of space. However, it does come with the danger. If one of those chains of images or files that have been backed up along the way becomes corrupt, you're not going to be able to recover that file. Now moving along to differential backup, essentially what that is, it's an entire backup of only the files that have changed since the last full backup. Sure. So after all that, I'm going to choose incremental backup. So any file that I change during the day will just get saved. Right. Let's look at the backup options, bottom left hand side. And here you can see I can choose things like compression. How much space do I want to save on my devices as my data is being backed up? I can also give it a password so it's encrypted. Nobody else can retrieve that. Performance. Must I use a lot of my system resources? Only a little bit. I'm running it at three in the morning. So go for it. Use all of it. If I was running it during the day, of course, there'll be a different story. Now, things like email notification, that's really, really useful. And that's going to basically tell me that a successful backup has been done or it failed. Things like custom commands I can do after or before the backup is run and an FTP server so I can move my data offsite if I have that facility. 
And file exclusions means I can exclude things like the recycle bin, temporary files, things that just basically take up a whole bunch of space. Hit the save button and my daily backups is ready to go, it's as simple as that. Yes, but does it actually work? Now that's a great question and always with backups you want to test your recovery as well as your backup. So here is a file, I'm going to add a whole bunch of additional text into it. Let's hit the save button and let's close down Word. Okay, there it is. Right, let's open up the backup software and now we're going to just let the daily backup run. We're going to force it, let it do its thing. And in order to make it a real test, I'm going to delete the file from my computer altogether. So delete. Right, that's gone. So go back into the backup software. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the recovery. And I'm going to choose that file that I want to recover. And now we can see I've got different timestamps. I'm going to choose the earlier version of this file because it does do version controls of this. And click on proceed. And you'll keep your eye on the file system at the back. And you'll see that file just appear. There it is. Right, let's see which version it recovered. Let's go double click on that file. And now, there it is. Okay, see that additional line is gone because I recovered the earlier version. Let's get rid of that file again. Let's do one more test. And what we're going to do is go into the recovering software, click on recover, choose the file again. And once we choose that, this time we're going to choose the later timestamp. And then click on proceed. And let's see if it will recover the entire file with the additional changes. Right, double click on the file. And there we go, both lines are in there. So clearly, this works. If you have the kind of work that requires constant backup as you're working on multiple files, databases, things that are constantly changed, then the smart backup is the option you wanna go with. It will essentially do a backup every half an hour of things that have changed. You know the pain that when you get a new computer and a new hard drive, you've got to reinstall absolutely everything, reset everything up, all your data, all your settings, all your apps. Well, you can do something called a disk clone. So essentially taking an exact copy of your current hard drive, including absolutely everything, and make an exact replica on that on your new computer, on your new hard drive. Now, yes, this does require some additional technical skills like attaching the hard drive. Do you have to optimize it for SSD? But the software does give you that facility. So your regular techie who looks after your computer will be able to simply use the software and do this for you. I love this facility. Under the wrench, go to something called Wipe Data. And this allows you to wipe your data clean off your hard drive, especially useful when you're trying to sell your old hard drive. You want to make sure nobody can recover your personal information. If you want to get your copy of it, check out the link below. There's a good special going on at the moment as well. Also, check out the other software that I used to recover the data from a memory stick and from my camera. The link will be up here. And if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you're new here. Hit the head below to subscribe and check out some of these other cool videos down here. And I'll see you guys on the next episode because that's Tech Simple. Cheers for now.